Here's Todd Friel to try to convince us that aliens don't exist because Bible. Whoa, who would have thunk the Flintstones were not only entertaining, but scientifically accurate. There is life on other planets. Okay, it's weird that his go-to fictional illustration of extraterrestrial life is the Great Gazoo from the Flintstones. I guess Todd's knowledge of science fiction stops at 1965. Now, if only they could figure out a better braking system. Have you noticed, NASA? They seem bent on finding life on Mars. I doubt there are many scientists who think life will be found on Mars. The articles Todd showed are about Mars maybe having been habitable billions of years ago. I've never heard a scientist infer that it therefore was inhabited, let alone is inhabited now. I'm sure lots of folks at NASA would like to find extraterrestrial life, but I doubt many, if any, think it's going to be found on Mars. From Joe Rogan to the History Channel to our own government, it seems everyone is intrigued by the idea there could be some form of life out there in the cosmos. It's become a downright cultural obsession. Yeah, because it would be badass if we found aliens. It would be especially awesome if we could talk to them because there could be so much to learn about them. Perhaps what drives this obsession is the desperate attempt to prove evolution. If only we can find primitive life somewhere, anywhere, anything! That will be the scientific proof we need to disprove the existence and necessity of God. Wow, that's a lot of non sequiturs. First of all, I doubt many of us who believe in evolution would think this would convince any creationist. If creationists don't believe that the life that is here on Earth evolved, why would pointing to life on another planet convince them that that life evolved? We evolutionists, as they like to call us, know that if we could prove that life exists on other planets, creationists would say simply infer that God put it there. Also, even if it did prove evolution, which I've never heard anyone claim that it would, that wouldn't disprove the existence and necessity of God. There are lots of theists who are open-minded about the possibility of extraterrestrial life and would love to find it. It's not because they're trying to disprove God. Do you think not a single Christian works at NASA? And speaking of which, there is no small amount of irony in the secularist mad dash attempts to find Martians. Their chief argument is that the universe is so big, statistically, there just has to be something out there with no proof. They cling to the belief there's other life out there somewhere. I'm an atheist who argues with Christians all day. I don't cling to any such belief, and I don't hope to ever use it as an argument against a creationist. I see no reason to believe that life is impossible on other planets, but I'm very skeptical of any attempt to calculate the probability of such a thing. I can't say whether the sheer number of planets in the universe is sufficient to overcome the improbability of life, which I also don't think anybody is able to reliably calculate. But if you ever suggest God might be the life force that is out there. Oh, no, that's impossible. Well, as best I can tell, that idea is a lot less coherent. I understand what it means for life to have developed from chemicals, since we're made of chemicals, but I have no idea what the Bible means when it says that God formed Adam out of dust and then breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. What is the breath of life? And what does it mean for an immaterial being like God to breathe it? How does a non-physical being breathe into anyone's nostrils? How does breath bring dust to life? Sure, we don't know all the ins and outs of how chemicals form the first organisms, but the idea that a non-corporeal entity breathed the breath of life into some dust and made it come alive that way raises more questions than it answers. There's no proof for God. That's the smell of irony. So how do we know if there is life out there? We don't unless we find it. We've got to look in here. That's right. A book that was written millennia ago gives us direction to answer the question, is there life on other planets? Is there a part of the Bible that even mentions other planets? Number one, God is the creator of 
everything. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, there were other physical beings out there somewhere. They do not exist outside of God's creative decree. In other words, if, and I don't think they will, but if they do find life out there, it is not going to substantiate evolution. Who's claiming that it would? This seems like a straw man argument to me. I've certainly never argued that if there is life on other planets, evolution is therefore true. Todd, nonetheless, seems to want everyone to believe that atheists are fascinated by the idea of life on other planets because he thinks that we think that this backs up evolution somehow. Very few, if any, atheists believe that to be the case. Number two, the Bible mums the word on the positive proposition that there is life out there. The focus of the Bible, especially in Genesis, but all throughout, it's God's unique creative work and his redemptive work on earth and nowhere else. Is that an argument from silence? Yeah, but it's still an argument. Todd apparently wants us to believe that we ought to be at least somewhat swayed by fallacious arguments merely because they are arguments. The argument from silence is especially silly in this case, considering the fact that there are lots of things the Bible doesn't mention. There's no mention of dinosaurs, for example. Now that we have lots of evidence of dinosaurs, some creationists think God put the fossils there to test our faith, and other creationists insist that they were actually in the Bible all along because the Bible mentions dragons. If we find conclusive evidence evidence of intelligent extraterrestrials, I suspect they'll do something similar. They might insist that the aliens are demons, or Nephilim, or some such thing. Some creationists will insist that the Bible wasn't really silent about them after all. Number three, what the Bible clearly does say is that God came to earth as a human in the person of Jesus to save humans on earth. It would be a bit inconsistent to think that other human or human-like creatures exist in his creation, outside his redemptive intentions for Earth. Well, how do you know that those redemptive intentions don't extend beyond Earth? How do you know Jesus doesn't want us to find aliens so we can preach the gospel to them? Number four, the Bible actually does mention other beings that are spiritual. Angels, demons, not humanoids from other planets. Do you smell the irony again? Secularists cry, there are no such thing as angels and demons, but there's definitely life out there that we haven't seen. I find it hard to believe that if we made contact with aliens, there wouldn't be a single fundy like Todd who wouldn't insist that they were demons. I mentioned Nephilim because it's not exactly clear what they are. I suspect that some Christians would identify aliens as Nephilim as well. Also, there's a reason extraterrestrials made out of matter seem more probable than spiritual beings that are made out of, I guess, some kind of immaterial ectoplasm, simply by virtue of the fact that we have never observed such a substance. Nor is it clear what such a substance even is. Mmm, it's pungent. But perhaps you're wondering, what about UFOs? We've got oodles of sightings of unidentified flying objects, and the solution to those mysterious sightings is baked right into the name. They are unidentified flying objects. We don't know what they are, but simply seeing an abnormality or inexplicable sight in the air does not warrant the conclusion that Kazoo is coming back. I wish Todd would apply this level of common sense reasoning to his own views. I get the strong impression, though, that he, like William Lane Craig, lowers the epistemic bar for his own beliefs while raising it for any belief he sees as a challenge to his religious views. <laughs> It is absolutely worth noting that many unidentified flying objects have indeed been identified as either misunderstood natural phenomenon, shooting stars, refraction, solar flares. Oftentimes we discover a UFO is actually misinterpreted man-made objects like air balloons, drones, military jets, UFOs. They are just that, unidentified flying objects, and it is only the wild imagination of NASA and the Twilight Zone that concludes, aha, that's a Martian spaceship. Who in NASA is concluding that UFOs are any kind of spaceship, let alone a Martian one? Might I humbly suggest, don't drive yourself bonkers trying to solve these ideas that have no scientific basis in reality. 
now all of a sudden Todd cares about whether an idea has a scientific basis in reality. We have better things to do and whatever you do, don't let it cause you to doubt God's very clear plan for this planet. Don't worry, it's definitely not UFOs that are making me doubt God's very clear plan for this planet. And here it is, someday, hopefully soon, an unidentified flying object is going to appear in the sky. That object is the person of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Really? Is that how it's supposed to happen? He's going to be in the sky? Why would he be in the sky? I'm going to infer that Todd is thinking that since the Bible says that Jesus ascended into heaven, then to get back to earth, he has to descend. This is a weird idea given that we know that you don't get to heaven by flying up into the sky. This implies that heaven is a physical place with a spatial location and that spatial location is in outer space somewhere. As as though you could get into a rocket and go there yourself. I don't think even Todd believes that to be the case. And he's going to burn up this place to cleanse it from corruption, create a new heaven and a new earth right here. Why would he need to create a new heaven? What's wrong with the old one? To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.